Hey guys, it's Katie, Girl About Library, and I'm here today with the top 10 books on my fall TBR. I've seen this tag going around. It is also part of Top 10 Tuesday, which I will link down below as well. It's just, it's what everyone wants to know, and it's what I am excited to share as well. Most of these books came from my holds list at the library, and holy good books coming my way this fall. I am excited about all of these. I hope that enthusiasm is contagious. I hope this video helps you kind of figure out what you want to read this fall, gets you some idea of what I'm going to be reading, what videos to look out for for me. So, Let's get into it. First up is The Glass Castle by Jeanette Walls. I picked this up at a used bookstore and I am so excited to reread this. I don't reread books like ever, never, it, never. But I remember liking this book so much and I remember absolutely nothing else about it. I just remember liking it. That's it. That's all I've got. Just generally really good feelings. I'm gonna be buddy reading it with Jade at Bedtime Bookworm and I do have some like kind of vague outline of the plot but I think a lot of that actually is coming from the movie trailer of the movie that I have not seen and wouldn't let myself see because I don't remember reading this book but I know that I read it so Next up is A Spark of Light by Jodi Picoult. Uh, she is an auto read author for me. Um, I don't have very many of those but she is one of them. I just feel like her books always have so much buzz, there's always so much discussion about them and I just, I can't fight that curiosity. I have to know what her book is going to be about. Jodi usually picks a controversial topic and just kind of puts like a Jodi Picoult spin on it and that's definitely the case with this book as well. It follows a women's clinic um, and a gunman attacks the women's clinic. It's told in like a really interesting narrative structure, I think it's like reverse in time and so that'll be interesting. I wasn't a huge fan of the last book that I read by her. I'll put the cover over here because I can't remember what it was called but I just it was it wasn't great. Um, she took a topic like she does kind of put her own spin on it and I, um, I didn't like it but I'm gonna try this one we'll see what happens. Next up is a thriller because thrillers and fall go together just so well, right? It is the spirit of the season. You need your spooky dark vibes in October and November. So my pick for a thriller this fall is going to be Under a Dark Sky, and that is by Lori Ratter Day. It just got dark and spooky in here. This is... Even my lighting is embracing fall vibes. Under a Dark Sky follows a woman named Eden. I don't know why I tell you the name of the character is like so important to me that I feel like I need to look that up. Oh no, the sun's back. Alright, okay, so this book is about a woman named Eden. Eden is recently willow willowed? God damn it. Eden is recently widowed, and she finds out that before her husband died, he booked a trip. To try and break out of her grief and just like mix things up, I guess, Eden has decided to go on this trip that she doesn't really know anything about. But when she goes on the trip, she finds out that instead of it being like a nice quiet retreat, she is rooming with like 20-somethings, and I don't know if you've ever roomed with 20-somethings, but quiet retreat, that will not be. One of the sweet mates is murdered, which is like, a whole nother kind of wild. After that happens, everyone becomes a suspect. You know how these go. I love this setup for thrillers, like the whodunit, and it usually is somebody who like you're familiar with in the plot, and it's a good twist, and yeah, so that is my thriller pick. I'm also hoping to read Fruit of the Drunken Tree that is by Ingrid Rojas Contreras. Seven years Spanish. Still can't roll my R's. I have heard such good things about this book. Like, this is a hyped book for me. Between Bookstagram and Booktube, heard amazing things. Mostly about the audiobook also, so this might be an audiobook listen for me. Not only is this a coming of age story, which is my favorite, it's also historical fiction, which is my other favorite. It's also based in a time and a place that I don't get to read about very often. It's Columbia in the 1990s. This is definitely on my highly anticipated list. So much hype. Gotta see if it lives up. Also on that list, because of hype, is Tin Man, which is by Sarah Winman. Um, goodbye fluff novels. Time to pull out the tissues. Fall is about thrillers, but it is also about digging into some deeper issues. Cuddle up with a blanket, feel some feels. This book follows two boys who are best of friends, um, that friendship kind of transitions into more of a romantic relationship, and then the story, that like story ends and the story resumes 
many years later. When the novel resumes, one of those male characters is married to a woman, and I don't think we know from the synopsis what has happened to the other man. The synopsis of this book is definitely intriguing, um, but I feel like this is going to be less of a plot read and more of a character study, very emotionally driven, and so I'm here for it. Can't wait to pick this one up. Box of tissues. Just hunker on down the couch. Hunker on down? What the hell? Also on my list is Attachments by Rainbow Rowell, and I just... Why have I not read this yet? It has been way too long since I have read a Rambo Rowell novel, and every time I go to pick one up, like, this is on the top of my list, and it just, it was either all checked out, I was impatient, and, like, wanted a Rambo Rowell that day, and so I just had to, like, take from what was available, and so I'm on the holds list for this, I'm waiting patiently, but I also cannot wait. This book gives me some office vibes. The plot of it sounds like something that would happen on The Office. Um, basically, it is about a guy who goes through and looks at emails that are sent at this company. Um, and there's two co co-workers there. They're women. And they exchange emails back constantly. They do not seem to care that their email is being monitored. And so he's reading these emails and finds them hilarious. But he also begins to fall in love with one of the women who is exchanging these emails. I have heard such, such good things about this book. It is like my last Rainbow Rowell adult fiction novel to read. It's the last one that she wrote um, that I haven't read yet. And I'm just, I'm so excited. But I'm also like anxious because once I finish it, then I won't have any more. I think the next book she's coming out with is a graphic novel. And I'm sure it'll be great, but like... It's not, it's not the same. So I'm excited to read that one, but I'm also, it'll be sad when I'm done. Next up is a book I haven't heard that much about, and it is Three Things About Elsie by Joanna Cannon. The premise of this book sounds so depressing, but possibly really, really good. Hear me out. It follows, like, I'm setting this up, I'm like, how do I set this up without it sounding terrible? The novel follows an 84-year-old woman her name is Florence. She has fallen, and I assume she has some sort of medical alert type button she can press because she is waiting for help to arrive. And while she is waiting, she reflects on her life. She especially thinks about her friend Elsie and the shared secret that they have. Intrigue. I'm here for it. I'm so here for like life reflections, life lessons, big picture takeaways inspiration about living your best life or just like things an 84 year old woman advice she would give I'm here for that but also this book is written by a psychologist and I think that that's potentially a really interesting take on this um, just like her understanding of like human nature the human experience bringing that to writing this book sounds very interesting. I'll be sure to let you know what I think when I finish this one up because I haven't seen that much about it so even more interesting. Next up is a book I have seen everywhere. Um, that is A Place for Us by Fatima Mirza. Everywhere. This book over the summer was in every bookstagram picture. It was just all over the internet, got a ton of buzz, but between moving and traveling, I was not able to get it. The holds list for this book is insane. I went on the list in July. I'm still on the list. It's supposed to be a great book to read on the beach. And with the weather in Texas, who knows, maybe that is where I will be reading it to. The book is also about family and relationships, and so it, it has some fall vibes. I just, I can't wait to be off the wait list for this. I feel like I've been on it since forever because I have been. And I, it's my much anticipated summer read that I will be reading in the fall. Also a book with a ridiculous holds list that I'm hoping to get my hands on this fall is Less by Andrew Greer. This book has an insane wait list. Like, I have been patiently waiting for at least a month, maybe longer, and I am still, I'm number 112 on the wait list right now for this. Basically, this will be a November read if I am lucky. At the same time, as much as I hate waiting on holds lists, I do love when a book has a ridiculously long holds list. Just like the buzz and how well loved a book has to be to have that many people interested to read it. I have a feeling that this book has a long wait list for a very good reason and so I'm excited to pick this one up. 
Last but not least is Educated by Tara Westover. This is another book that has been on my list for a while and I really hope I get to read it in the fall. It is so well loved. It is a nonfiction memoir about a woman who I gets educated. I, I genuinely have no idea what this book is about, but I remember reading the synopsis and getting like solid hillbilly elegy type vibes, which was one of my favorite nonfiction reads of 2017. Educated has been on the bestseller list for like months. It is a solid pick. Everyone really seems to be enjoying it and I, 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 I want to read it. Again, been on the wait list at the library for a while. You know one of the things about moving to like a bigger city is that the hold lists are like serious, serious business. We used to live in a smaller community, there weren't, wasn't like any competition for books. The longest wait list I saw was maybe like 10 people. The wait lists in Austin, Texas are ridiculous. I mean they have like 50 copies of every book, but it's still a long, long list. I'm not sure I'll be able to resist buying this one at this point, like I really want to read it, so we'll see. And those are the picks on my fall TBR. Um, so excited for these. Feeling a little sorry for the books that I currently have out from the library because now all I want to do is pick up these books. Do you struggle with like constantly looking forward to your next read? I know I do. I have a really hard time like being in the moment of the book that I'm currently reading because there are always 50 other books that I cannot wait to get to. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe for more bookish content. Thank you so much for watching and have a great day.